If you have any kind of business, especially an online business, then you understand the power of email marketing. And as it stands right now, today, the number one marketing channel out there is email marketing. It's definitely a marketing channel we should learn how to use, use it properly so that it works for your business. Welcome to another episode of eCreate Biz, where we talk about what it's really like to navigate building a real business. Thanks for joining me today. I'm your host, Caleb Becker. Do you have an email to write? Do you have some copy to produce? Are you creating a sales page right now? Are you working on a lead magnet? Are you creating a social media post? And you're just stuck with what to write. Not sure of, not even sure of where to start. Your creative juices have just all been drained and you're staring at a blank screen crippled with writer's block. Well, if so, I have something that will help you. It's a 27 email template prompt guide that'll give you a template that you can copy and you can paste it into a software like ChatGPT. And that will give you results in just a few seconds so that it will give you a really good starting point. I've used this many times in copy that I create. Matter of fact, I use it lots. It really helps the creativity to really get flowing. Uh, and it's amazing to see what this, what AI does in giving you something that you can actually edit and pick apart and pull from and be able to come up with new ideas. So like I said, you can get this guide. It's got 27 prompts and it will be able to help you out inside of your next article that you've got to write. And you can simply get this guide by going to ecreatebiz.com forward slash prompts. That's ecreatebiz.com forward slash prompts. And I will link that in the description below. So without any further delay, let's just jump right in and get started. When you spread your net across many different marketing channels, your main goal is to get people to opt in to your email list, to your newsletter, and subscribe to your thing. And a question that I've gotten recently, and one that I've asked myself multiple times, is how soon should you sell to somebody when they sign up? Should you sell to them right away? Should you kind of nurture that for a bit and then sell to them later? What do we mean by nurturing? And really at the end of the day, to have a properly set up email campaign, it needs to be monetized. You need to be able to monetize that list through selling of your products or your services. At the end of the day, that's what you need to do. There's a strategy that I think we need to talk about. And let's just unpack this topic, hard sell versus a nurturing and a soft sell, or one and the same or both or combine them. Let's just have a discussion on this and let's just see if this can inspire you to set up a campaign that works for you and what your products and services are so that it can serve your customers the best. So I like to think of the person who subscribes to your list as a person because they are, they're a real person. And that person had seen that there was value into what you were offering them, that free thing that you were going to give them. And they thought it was worth it to exchange their email address for that free thing that you were going to give them. However, that person, even though they've signed up to your list, is a stranger to you. They don't really know you. They don't really know what you all have to offer. They don't really know really anything about your brand other than that they liked what they seen and they seen it because you were spreading your net across other marketing channels. And so they signed up. So they're a stranger. And to me, that's like, that's important 
it's important for me to understand that that's a stranger that's on my list. And does it make sense that I try to sell them right away? And the answer to that question is, I'm going to say yes and no. It depends. It depends on what kind of price point we're talking about, what kind of risk these people have to give up so that they can experience your product. So I recommend for a business to have multiple tiers of pricing, price points, like a low ticket price to a mid ticket to a high ticket and anything in between. And what low ticket stands for for you might be different than what somebody else or for myself, but it needs to be low ticket in for your market. All right. And it's important to have a product suite so that you can offer to your market. And so when someone's a stranger, what would make the most sense? The most, what would make the most sense is that how can you inspire them to purchase something that will give them the quickest win where they would take the smallest step to get a win how can you do that so for example some people sell a book twenty dollars some people sell a printable some people sell like a planner again like ten fifteen dollars there's others who sell templates and in, in, in a digital format and again that's at a small price point, that stranger, all they have to do is spend, you know, a little bit of money, 10, 15, 20, maybe up to $40 to purchase this. And you see, that's little risk. They're not going to be losing a lot if it doesn't work out very well. And the thing that you give them is a very simple, easy to implement, and will give them a win. And from your brand standpoint, you have so many more problems that you can solve and that you can help them with, but you just won't be able to unload that like a big fire hose all at once. So the thing that that I think is important is how to take this stranger to becoming uh, a customer and how to do that and how to make sense in doing that to where you're not going to come across as salesy. And so that's why I like to think of that small price point, that small low ticket product as a really great starting point. It's not a hard sell. It's not, it's not forcing them. It's just, you know, by the way, I offer this. And by the way, it helps you with that. And by the way, you can get this right away. And so it's just a really good way to introduce. All right. Now, when they've purchased your product, now it makes sense to help them solve bigger problems. Because now they learned to trust you. They bought something from you. They liked it. They implemented it and it worked. Now for you to offer a mid-tier price point or a high ticket price point is going to make more sense. And they're going to be ready to be more, they're going to be more interested in seeing what your offer is. And they can decide if it's for them. And that's how you can move them along. Right. So let's go the other way. Let's go ahead and say someone's a stranger and you offer your most expensive product to them right from the start. Okay. If you go down that road there, they're going to see this high price point. It's going to cost a lot of money. So therefore that's a lot of risk on their part. They don't trust you really well. They don't really know you very much. So therefore there's a lot of risk that they're going to have to have. And most people they don't want to just spend a lot of money right off the bat. So there's so many things working against you on that high price point product if you offer it right away. So that's why I want to bring the argument up is looking at it from both sides and the overall picture. If you can come across to them as a very small step with a very quick way of achieving results, and that's what that price point of the product will help them do that then again, it seems like that's going to be the best way that you're going to be, be able to serve them. And if they don't purchase it, that's okay. You can still have opportunity to sell them again, sell them on something else of a low ticket product. And if they don't purchase, that's just okay. What you'll do is you'll go ahead and make sure that they are on your weekly newsletter or your 
weekly content that you put out there. And over time, they're going to realize that you are a trusted source. Uh, I just want to pause for a second to say thank you for subscribing to this channel. And I really appreciate your comments. So let's jump right back in where we left off. I've seen customers who have made a purchase two years later after they've signed a list. I heard of others who they didn't see a purchase until five years later from somebody. And they're getting the emails the whole entire time. It just it took five years. All right. I don't want that to discourage you, but I just want you to know that some people, it takes that kind of time. Others are ready to purchase right away. What you need to focus on is on that relationship, that you are a trusted resource, that you are a guide in this field. And by you showing up in their inbox, it's an email that's worthwhile to them. To me, that's like the best thing you can do. So then you might be wondering, well, when do I offer my mid-tier or my high-ticket products? When, when does that make sense? Well, to me, let's just go ahead and go back into the low-ticket product that you offered. When somebody buys that and they've been able to use it and experience it, it and you've been able to serve them with, with awesome customer service, so many days later, so many weeks later, maybe a month later, maybe two, you work in your upper price products to them and you, you offer it to them. You show them how this can help them in bigger ways. But you see, that's after they've purchased. It really only makes sense to sell them a bigger price point when they realize that you were trusted on the smaller aspects, right? Let's just say that they purchased a $10 product from you. And out of that $10 product, they've had questions. They've had, they had to come back and ask you this and ask you that. And you've had to answer support emails. And you're just probably thinking to yourself, this is just for a $10 product. Why do I got to keep answering this question? Why do I got to keep helping these people? So important that you do that. That customer service is extremely important because you're letting them know that you're there for them. You're there to help them, support them. They had to only pay $10, very low risk for them. And they're getting all the support. They're going to look at your next tier product, your mid tier, your high ticket product. They're going to look at that as an option for them because they know that you've come through on the lower price stuff. So I hope that makes sense when you think of it that way. It's it makes sense to me because when I, when I have to realize at the end of the day, I'm also a customer. I'm also a consumer. People also pitch me stuff and I know how I like to be pitched and I know how I look at somebody that's brand new. And that's really kind of like, that's the groundwork we have for all this that we're working with, that we're working towards. We tend to be so self-focused and not relationship focused. And whereas the relationship is going to get you further. So I hope this has been able to help you understand your email campaigns and how to think about how you should offer your products. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments below that if you have tiered pricing, different price points, just what they are and what prices that you charge. So comment below. I would love to see this discussion continue on. And that's all I have for you today. Thanks again for joining me and I will see you in the next one.